Hey Raiders, welcome back to the bakery, where we're always baking up the freshest of anime theories. Today, we're diving into what might be made in Abyss's most mysterious text, the Song of Hiroyami. And trust me, this isn't just some ancient fairy tale, it might be the key to surviving the Abyss itself. Before we crack open this mystery, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if you love diving into anime's deepest mysteries. And fair warning, we're heading into some major spoiler territory here for both the anime and the manga. Let's start with how this mysterious song was discovered. Because even that's weird. About 250 years ago, a set of sealed letters appeared in the first layer of the abyss. Now, Finding random stuff in the abyss isn't that unusual, right? But these weren't just any letters. They contained the first and only account of the curse of the seventh layer. But here's where things get strange. While people were trying to decode these letters, a large part of the message just vanished, disappeared completely. But the story doesn't end there. In fact, it's where things start getting really weird. Those supposedly lost portions, they started showing up again not all at once, not in their original form, but scattered throughout the community. They appeared in children's songs, in games, in fairy tales, almost like the abyss itself was choosing how this information should spread. Now, let's look at what we actually know about the contents of this song. According to Nanachi, it's based on the tales of white whistles, but that's not the whole story. Savajo revealed something much more interesting. The song actually originated with someone called the Priestess and an unknown Dalva who worked with her. And the song itself, it described places deep in the abyss that most people have never seen. It talks about the sixth layer and these creatures called Emperor Shell. It mentions something called the Netherworld Priestess and a mysterious place known as the Faraway Nest. But here's where it gets really interesting. There's a rumor and pay attention to this part because it's huge that the only way to reach the bottom of the abyss and still live is to possess the knowledge coded within this song. Let's break down some of the actual verses we know about. The song mentions many eyes watching. It talks about a path of souls, described as a very large whirlpool path. It describes how calamity is filled with vanishing poison and continues to be the way of the other side. There is also this fascinating verse about something that looks different, but imitates breathing in and out. Song notes that from the outside it looks like the same as always, but suggests that here you can peek a little. And then there's this really cryptic part about only the flawed ones turn away their eyes, and only the flawed ones can continue breathing. This connects directly to what Savage revealed about the birthday death disease. And it's actually something called the breath mentioned in the original scripture. But there's more. The song also includes what's known about the hymn of Gronz, which talks about a gentle voice calling you and a mass of stars covering the dark night. It mentions something about a gold flake awakening in a faraway nest and speaks of souls shining without knowing. And here's another fascinating detail. The names Shurami and Mene were supposedly mentioned in the lost portion of the original scripture. And while we don't know exactly what role they played, there's speculation that they might be connected to the birthday death disease. In case you don't remember who Shurami and Mene are, it's the two twins that are in Savajo's group. When we piece all this together, we start to see patterns. The song isn't just describing the abyss, it seems to be giving instructions, warnings, maybe even a guide for survival. But survival of what? Think about it. It contains the only known account of the seventh layer curse. It mysteriously spreads its knowledge through the community. It's connected to the birthday death disease through the breath. And it might hold the secret to reaching the bottom of the abyss alive. We have to ask ourselves, what if this isn't just a collection of fairy tales? What if the song of Hiroyami is actually an ancient warning system passed down through generations, preparing us for something that happens every 2,000 years. What do you think? Have you noticed any other patterns in the song's verses? Let me know your theories in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed unraveling this mystery with me, make sure to check out the other videos here at the bakery. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Abyss theories. Stay safe in the Abyss, and Delvers, maybe learn how to sing.